Hello and welcome to episode 25 of the Lottie Now Bot podcast. My name's Lindsay, I'm a crochet designer and editor from the Cotswolds in the UK and this is my podcast all about crochet. A very warm welcome if it's your first time viewing and a big warm welcome back as ever if you are a returning viewer. As I said, this is episode 25 and I am known as Lottie and Albert everywhere on the internet. You can find me most active on Instagram, but you can also find me and a group for this podcast on Ravelry, um, and I'm on Etsy and my blog as Lottie and Albert too. This week I'm going to be talking about finished objects, whips and new things, of which I have some really exciting things to show you, so more of that later. I hope everybody's had a lovely two weeks since I last saw you. I received so many lovely comments last time about various things. My crochet between the lines shawl, which was nearly finished. Um, and also just some feedback on some general life stuff I was chatting about. I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed um, with the amount of stuff I had on. And I got some really amazing advice from you all. So thank you so much. And again, I will talk about that a little bit later. Um, I am wearing, if you have noticed, a crochet item. It is my um, Hotel of Bees shawl. Um, which I've worn a few times on the podcast. But um, it's still a favourite. Mine didn't really come out as big as it probably should have done. Um... But, yeah, I don't know, I still, wear, I still enjoy wearing it. Um, some people's came out massive, and I do think that I, being lazy, I didn't really try and get gauge when I made this last year. I just made it, and so mine is sort of on the little, littler side, but still works as a shawl, and I quite often wear it as a scarf as well. So, yeah, that's the Hotel of Bees shawl pattern, which I highly recommend if anybody... Um, hasn't heard of it, I'm sure lots of you have because there was a cow last year um, and loads of people made it but it starts at the widest point, bonus, and it just has so many different sections it keeps your interest if like me you are um, <laughs> fickle with your projects and yeah just love it, I really love it. I have talked about the yarns and the things that I've used in previous episodes so if you want to go back and have a look uh, look for an episode with this as a picture and the chances are I'm chatting about it. So that's what I'm wearing. Uh, finished objects wise, I do have a finished object and you may have spotted him in the background. This is a slightly different finished object and at first glance you may not realise that this is crochet. Uh, this is Harry, everybody meet Harry. And I'm aware that he is probably a bit of a Marmite make. I uh, have shared him um, online on my Instagram feed. And he started out life as a loopy stitch swatch. Loopy. Loop stitch. Crochet loop stitch. Which had far more love than I ever anticipated. And after that I posted a video of me cutting all the loops. And the reaction from people was hilarious. I didn't really anticipate that cutting the loops on a cushion, uh, cushion on a swatch would um, cause such drama. But some people were quite upset. <laughs> or said that the video made them nervous. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Either. Anyway, this is um, this is him finished. Believe it or not, he is just a fun piece of wall art. Um, I have done a few loop stitch projects in the past. I did a cushion, which you may remember was a pattern in Molly Makes a few months ago. Um, and I have got another cushion, which I'll show you in a minute, which is loop stitch. And I just wanted to see what would happen if I cut the loops. I was reliably informed um, by a colleague that um, you can cut crochet loop stitch and it doesn't all fall apart. It's actually sort of knotted together. So yeah, and I mean just leopard print because who doesn't love leopard print? I then have just secured him very beautifully round um, the inner of um, an embroidery hoop which is how I have gotten the circle-ish shape. So yeah, he's really fun. Um, and I do have a work in progress related to this just because... 
uh, everybody loved it so much and I loved making it so much. It was really fun just to have a creative experiment and a play and to see what came out of it. I was talking last time, two weeks ago, about how I was feeling a bit burnt out and I'd generally taken on too much stuff and I'd done a, um, a commission for Molly Makes magazine and I had um, also been doing lots of stuff for Hobbycraft and then I finally had a bit of a window where I wasn't doing anything for anybody else and I thought, do you know what, I'm just going to do something fun for me. So this is what happened. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I made him last weekend, basically. And he really didn't take long. So um, definitely recommend just having them play in an experiment and seeing what happens. My big tip for loop stitch, if you want to do a colour change in loop stitch, I don't know if this is an actual thing, but I'm calling it the extended loop stitch so if you're familiar with the stitch you insert your hook into the stitch below and instead of sort of yarning over you almost yarn under and catch the yarn around a loop pull it up and then um, in a normal loop stitch you would yarn over and then um, pull through both loops if you want to do a color change uh, the best way I found was after you've created your loop and you've got two loops on your hook. Yarn over with your current colour and only pull through one loop. And then yarn over in a second colour and pull through two loops. And that locks down the colour change much better than if you are just yarning over with your second colour and pulling through both of the initial two loops. It's not going to make any sense probably if you've never done a loop stitch, but um, that is what's, uh, how I found it best to make colour changes in loop stitch, is to do that sort of um, extended loop stitch. And that way you're still locking in your loop stitch with the first yarn over, but it also then allows you to do your colour change with two loops on the hook um, into your second colour. But um, I will move on now to works in progress because I have a linked project, which I probably will release as a pattern. Um, so that very garbled instruction I just gave will become much more clear if you are interested in making this next thing. So it is very similar, as you will see. Um, animal print, in fact it's the same pattern, which we have to see that I used for this, just in different colours. And you'll see here that I've just done a tapestry section, and then this section here is going all loopy. Um, so the idea behind this make is that it is going to be a clutch bag. Um, I'm hoping that the tapestry section will form here, and then the loopy section can fold over, and we've got a clutch bag. I am loving this. So many people, so this is what it looks like pre-cut in the loops. So many people commented on my Harry swatch and said, he should be a clutch bag. Oh, sorry, my light's going weird. Um, I do think, however, seeing them together, that this colour palette is much more impactful than this. But then, if you don't want a crazy statement, Maybe, you know, you can choose whatever colours you like. I thought I would try it in these. For both of them, I'm using Aran Weight yarn. Um, in this one, the mustard colour is um, a Women's Institute Aran Tweed, um, which is a Hobbycraft yarn. And this grey fluffy one, I'll show you, I've got it down here, is a Fildar yarn. Um, and it's called Phil Noirge and this was great actually for the really fluffy grey parts in this. I think it really added um, added to the finished make and this is the Hobbycraft yarn I sent as well. You may remember if you were a long term viewer that I made a Barba scarf last autumn out, out of this and a off-white colour yarn. Um, so yeah, it's like a little cloud. Oh, I've dropped him. Anyway, for this, I'm using um, 
Again, two knit craft yarns. I have so many in my stash. These are leader of the pack. So these are um, an Aran weight and they are um, an alpaca blend. And then I also wanted to use a kind of creamier or more neutral colour. And I had in my stash, from somebody else's D stash, these. And this is Debbie Bliss. Um, and it's like um, an Aran tweed as well. But she says, she, Debbie Bliss, told me that this was an Aran weight. It's very thin compared to the other Aran weights I've been using. So what I ended up doing with this was using two loops together, which is probably not ideal. I probably would be better off if I had three yarns from the same range, which were all the same weight. But there we go. I am keen to use your stash, so let's not be precious. Um, so yeah, this is the loopy bit. I had brought a clutch of a similar size, but I've left it over there. Um, but that was my version for it, that this part would be the clutch, seam the sides, and then come down for the loopy top. I am going on holiday soon, so hopefully I can finish him and get some holiday clutch snaps. But yeah, just a fun leopard print project because who doesn't love leopard print? Sorry if you don't love leopard print. That was quite a lot of leopard print chat if you don't. Uh, other, other works in progresses that I have going on are continuing the animal print theme apparently. I really wanted to try and see if I, if I could create a sort of crochet um, Dalmatian print. There's a lot of love for Dalmatian print at the moment, particularly in interiors. Lots of wallpapers and cushions and things. So, this was my attempt. He's going to be a cushion. Um, I don't know. It's a bit of fun. Well, actually, make a pretty good jumper. Um, hmm. Bikini. Um, <laughs> I yeah. Again, just a bit of an experiment. I started this last weekend, the same time I was making Harry, <laughs> Harry in my clutch bag. Um, it's quite hard, it turns out, to get what looks like a random stitch distribution that's not actually random. Because if you're going to do a pattern, you need it to be followable. That's a word so that others can follow it. Um, so that's, I've been trying to work out a kind of even spread and I think I'm achieving it at the top here. At the bottom here, it was still looking a little bit um, full, a bit too many spots and then, yeah, maybe from a distance it's easier to see. But again, just a bit of fun. I'd quite like to make up two of these. Um, but I've had one of those weeks or fortnights. I think maybe like the first week of the fortnight, I was just burnt out and I couldn't really focus on anything. And then I got this massive creative burst and just wanted to make all the things. But then when that happens, I don't actually end up finishing anything. So everything just gets a little bit of work done on it. But this is a, just a fun Dalmatian cushion swatch that may take a while for me to finish. I'm using uh, Knitcraft in the Zone, which is um, the same yarn that I used um, in that um, lovely like buttercup yellow to make my daughter a cowl. And um, this is again about an hour in weight, a worsted weight, and I'm using a four ply black with it. Um, I had a really good chat. Um, my friend Emily of Makey has inadvertently, I don't think she volunteered for the role, turned into be turned to be my like creative sounding board and she and I were chatting about it and we kind of said you want the black to show but you don't want it to show through the white and I wanted the black to have a round shape and the only really way you can achieve that in crochet is with like a bobble stitch but I didn't want it to be really raised and chunky. So I thought if I used a black four ply with a white worsted, or you could probably could even go chunkier on the white, um, it would help achieve that. This is the back. 
Even the back's quite nice. <laughs> so yeah, thanks Emily um, for your help in that. Hopefully I help her too. Mm. I definitely, uh, we definitely chat about her projects too, but it's only me just being like, what do you think of this? Shall I do this? <laughs> Please help me. Oh, whizzing through the works in progress is this. What do I have in this bag? Um, prior to starting Harry, who kind of distracted me from everything else, I was having a little bit of a revisit and finish off mood. And so there were a couple of things that I have worked on in order to get them into a stage of readiness for finishing. Um, so you may remember this cushion pad. And I'm not sure if I showed you this, but this is another cushion that I was working on. This is, um, again, a loop stitch, um, which I love. Um, all he needs is a few more rows of grey, and this one just needed squaring off um, with a few more rows of this cotton. This one is a really fun mix of um, cotton, DK cotton and then um, chunky mohair. This is a Rico yarn. I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called. And in this cushion, you can sort of see the thicker yarn being carried um, between the cotton. But I quite liked that. Um, and I just love mixing up textures and yarn weights. So this was a sort of nod to that. And he's got really nice drape actually. Um, I'm not sure that this would make such a great jumper. Maybe for your dad or something. <laughs> As a cushion, it's a winner, right? So he just needs a back. Um, and he just needs a back. Unfortunately, cushion backs are possibly the most boring thing in the world to make. I am half tempted to just sew the back because that would be so much quicker for me. Um, and if I do release these as patterns, then I could just... Um, give people the option and work out the stitch count for the back in crochet if people would prefer to crochet the back of a cushion but if you've watched before you will know that straight lines back and forth in crochet are like my worst enemy I just find them so boring I'm so useless um it's partly why I haven't made many garments because um yeah I just I love Changing stitches, changing colour, interesting stitches, mixing up yarns. I do not love straight rows back and forth the same colour. I understand that they're meditative and sometimes if I can get into it and it has to be done, doesn't it? But um, I, had, I did start the back to this cream one actually, it's here. Does anybody enjoy that part of it? I don't, I don't know. So, two more whips that are very close to finishing are these cushions um as i said i will probably just sew their backs um in a bit to get things done this is a little swatch of the the rico yarn oh I'll, I'll put it in the um future me will go back and edit and put it in the comments and let you know let you know what it is that i'm using if you like that yarn um, what else have I got to show you? I also have done, I feel like I've done a lot in the last couple of weeks. I also have done some work on my Atomic Flowers blanket. Um, after, I think I showed it last time. I decided to get a wiggle on and do some joining. Um, and it's grown quite quickly. Uh, so this is the blanket. And as you can sort of see, I, I'm not really sure why, but I decided I would join them across the diagonal like this. It doesn't really aid the joining because I have not mastered continuous join as you go. So I'm just doing join as you go, as you can see here, on each square. Um, and creating an extra end for myself each time, which I still haven't sewn in. But yeah, I just it made sense to my head to do it this way so that's what <laughs> that's what I've ended up doing um but yeah oh it's feeling more blankety now this is my atomic flowers blanket um using scrap d 
DK yarns from my stash and it's going to be for my daughter's room. Um, so yeah, I've been quite enjoying those colours recently and if we pop them up here, just working on working on a blanket. They take a while to grow, but they're so satisfying when you finish them, aren't they, blankets? Not that I've ever finished that many. I think, I think, having talked really quickly at you all, um, that that's pretty much it for works and progresses. I've still got a little stack of atomic flowers to join. I've got to work out which of my projects are most transportable for holiday, I wasn't say holiday knitting there, holiday crochet, because uh, we are going on holiday very soon, and obviously I need to take loads, <laughs> if I'll be there for a week, um, but I've got a feeling that this blanket is probably not the best thing to take on a summer holiday to Portugal. Probably not, is it? I'm definitely going to take that clutch, and I'm also going to take my um, Wool in the Gang Ra Ra Raffia hat because if I don't get it finished for my summer holiday, then who even am I? I need to get that finished and to wear it and to actually make use of it as a hat. And holiday's the perfect time, so I think I might even take that one on the plane. Um, and just hope that they don't take my crochet hook off me. It's wooden, so it's not even going to come up on the scanner. So I reckon I'll be okay for that one. Um, and I think I will also take my crochet between the lines shawl, which I was almost hoping I would have finished for this podcast. It just didn't happen with um, all the animal print shenanigans that went on. Uh, so... What do I have to show you next? I have a couple of... <laughs> I have a couple of new things. I'm quickly going to show you um, the new issue of Molly Makes, which, if you haven't watched before, I'm the commissioning editor for, so I, um, I commission the projects and work with designers on ideas, either my ideas or their ideas, or normally a combination of ideas, in order to create 10 new projects for each issue but there are some really nice crochet projects in this issue that I just wanted to share with you one of which is on the cover aren't they adorable um these two are by Sandrine of I don't fully know how I'm saying her name but I think it's um tool neat let's find her page I'll put it below um but yeah two little amigurumi bears for the cover project and they are just adorable here they are Sandrine Davies, you will probably have seen her stuff she's Tornicote or Tornit um, on Instagram they're so cute there's also a project in here from Emma Escott of Lulu Loves UK how well you can see that. Um, if you haven't heard of Emma before, but you enjoy my podcast, you will probably enjoy Emma's as well. She does a similar crochet podcast. She also does really nice book reviews, and I just love her style. She always wears the prettiest clothes, and she does a lot in neutrals and sort of whites, but um, quite lacy and frilly and pretty, and... I knew that she would do such a good job for this bunting idea that we had and she really really did. I'm worried that the light is not showing up properly. But yeah, so some really lovely summer bunting um, and that uses paint box yarns, cotton DK. And as I said, Emma is Lulu Loves UK on Instagram and I think that's the same name that she's under on YouTube as well if you want to check her out. Um, a really cute knitted crown from Tiam of Knit Safari and a little pom-pom cape. I mean I just I don't want to bore people because I know that you might feel like I'm just trying to push my magazine on you but we did this um, woven jacket which I love but this is what I spend 
like 80% of my time working on and I'm quite proud of a lot of these projects. So here's a sneak peek. So this is issue 93 that I'm showing you. There's a project coming up in issue 94, which, oh my goodness, here's a crochet pinata cushion in case you're not sure what you're looking at by Celine of Crafty CC. Um, I can't wait for that. He is honestly so fun. There's some macrame placemats in here from Emily Katz's new book too. And lastly, 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 I'm just gonna show you this craft room is a miniature craft room. This lady, Bethan, has just unbelievable craft skills. She basically makes uh, amazing modern miniatures. Um, I would be very happy if my real craft room looked this good. So there's three or four projects in here that you can make if you want to make your own miniatures. And also if you are on Instagram, just do yourself a favour and go and look at the modern miniatures hashtag because <laughs> There are people on there, Bethan is one of them, and she does it really well, who are making the most incredible mini dolls houses. Not necessarily for children, perfectly acceptable for adults to make them too, which are so on trend and stylish that you would wish that your own house looked like that. Um, also, this is totally going in my kitchen as a poster print. So much love for this issue, as I said, I'm not trying to push it on you, but I, yeah, I kind of just commission projects that I would like to make, so it's a bit of a no-brainer that I would love it, I suppose. Um, last but not least, I want to show you something which I fear may cause mixed reactions <laughs> of enjoyment, pleasure, uh, possibly jealousy because I received a message from Clover, the crochet tool and general craft giant, uh, to see if they could send me um, some supplies. And you, you know that this does happen to me occasionally, and I would say yes, because who doesn't like free stuff, right? Um, there was no obligation, they didn't want me to nest, they didn't ask me to post about it a certain amount of times or talk about it or anything, they just asked if they could send me some stuff. So I said yes, and I had a really nice chat with the lady. Um, she's based in Japan, and I was telling her about, just by email, I was telling her about our trip there last year, which I loved. I'm in love with Japan um, so much more since having been there, and I would highly recommend it to anybody thinking about going on holiday. So <laughs> Clover are based in Japan, that's all I was really trying to say. Um, and a couple of weeks went by and I had it in the back of my head that something might be arriving, I didn't really know what, and then this box turned up. I'll just pick it up and show you. Because it's not a small box, in fact, it's a very large box, and it is full to the brim of crochet stuff. <laughs> so much stuff. I never in my wildest dreams thought they would send me quite so much stuff. So I won't go through everything because that might bore you, but some highlights included this pack of crochet and more hooks, um, and this pack, um, and this pack, and this pack of Tunisian crochet hooks. These are double-ended Tunisian crochet hooks, um, and they are wooden. And there are one, two, three, four different sizes here. I think they're the same size on each end. I don't even know how to do Tunisian crochet, and I've never done any, so this is gonna be amazing. Um, these, as you can see, I have already cracked open and I'm just loving. Obviously, I would probably say something nice about Clover anyway because they've sent me so much stuff, but I am being very genuine when I say that these hooks make so much difference to my crochet. 
Uh, I don't really know why I didn't get some nice metal hooks sooner. They look very similar to the cheap ones that we all have. And so I don't even really fully understand, oh these are both clever, I don't really fully understand what it is that makes them better. I suppose they're just really smooth, there's no snags or catches like some of the really cheap um, aluminium ones you get. And the handles are not particularly soft or squishy, but they just work really well. And yeah, they just... Maybe it's psychological because I was just so happy to receive them, but I honestly feel like they make my crochet quicker. Like, I've whipped up that Dalmatian cushion and Harry using these. They came, I think, mid-week, just after I podcast last time. So, yeah, those are those hooks. They range from 2mm to 6mm in that pack. And then this pack of gorgeous um, pastel ones... These are 1.75 to 0.6. Now, I have never done any crochet that tiny, but that those pastels are so pretty. They make, they make me want to do tiny crochet. I've just noticed there's a little pack of metal things. Oh, they're little lids. Can you see in the back corner? I didn't know what they were, but they're little lids, I guess, to stop you spiking yourself, which probably would happen to me. Um, and then finally, crochet hook wise, <laughs> there's this set which I haven't even opened, but this is all the chunkier ones. Their colours are just so nice as well. Look at this orange, it's like a neon. Don't know how well that's showing up on camera. Um, so there's like a nine, an eight, a seven, a 12, 6.5, 15, and a 10 millimeter in that pack. So, thank you so much, Clover. I'm not quite sure why you just sent me such an amazing big box of stuff. I'm very pleased that you did. And I really would recommend those hooks, as I said, um, because they're just really fun. There is so much stuff in here. Um, there were some really sharp scissors which I just looked for and they're not in this box because I've had them out and I've been using them. They're probably in a project bag down there, which was so sharp, they were perfect for making pom-poms. Um, this is another highlight. I didn't really know that this existed. I wouldn't have known to search for this, but it's called a pattern chart marker set. And it's basically, there's a larger one which I've taken off because I've been using. Um, it has magnets and you take it off and you put it on your chart that you're working on and it helps you keep your place which is really clever and just very simple and I have used that already um, when I was doing my Dalmatian um, I'd drawn out a chart so I would recommend that because I've used it what else have we got in here? there are pom pom makers ranging from the Sublime, the ridiculously small. I would like to make a large animal head with these. Have you seen animal head pom poms? If you haven't, Google them after this because animal head pom poms are so cute. And these really tiny, tiny, dinky ones, um, which are just cute because they're so small, right? Uh, there's a couple of other. Um, pom-pom mapers and things in here. I've got kind of needle threaders and um, tape measures. I've got um, yarn cutters, which, confession time, I often cut yarn with my teeth. I know that's disgusting. And when I went to Yarndale last year, Charlie of Candidly Rhubarb told me that it's the, it's like the equivalent of opening a bottle with your teeth, isn't it? Cutting yarn with your teeth. So this you can kind of wear on a necklace or have on your key ring and it chops the yarn for you. And just things that I don't even know where to begin with, like this flower loom, which is really interesting. This is a hairpin lace tool. I've never done any hairpin lace crochet. Um, here's a little 
picture as an example you may recognize it when you see it so that is fascinating this i think it's called a wonder knitter and i think it's a little bit like a french knitter like you use when you're children so i might see if i can get my little girl to have a go with that and see if she um if she would like a go I think it's where you kind of wrap the yarn around and you pick it over. But it also looks like there's some kind of turning mechanism where it does it for you. Actually, this is the thing. I just need to investigate and see what all this stuff does. I've got stitch markers for days. More than I will ever need. So, I mean, these mark these are going to need to go in, um, in a giveaway at some point. Look at these bad boys. That would be great if you're using chunky yarn. A tassel maker. I didn't know there was such a thing. I just thought you used a bit of cardboard. But this looks like it would make some pretty awesome giant tassels. After saying that I wasn't going to show you everything, I realise I am basically showing you everything that's in this box. But Jumbo Wonder Clips. I feel like these would be good for blocking. I think they're predominantly a quilting accessory, but um, yeah. So just, just an amazing amount of stuff. And some of the things they've like left me little notes on to say what, what they're good for. Isn't that sweet? So I was, I'm in sunlight. I was just beside myself. <laughs> As you can imagine when this arrived and even my husband who maintains a very um laid back should we say laid back he he doesn't get particularly interested in my crochet normally he was very interested in this box he was like look how much stuff you've got how why have they sent you so much stuff i don't know babe but let's not complain about it blocking pins count marker this is interesting this is a circular stitch holder which i would have thought well that's for knitting that's not for me but there's a little note on it that says can be used for keeping stitches of amigurumi which is a really clever idea so rather than moving a stitch marker at the end of every row you could thread this through your next row and then at the end of the project just pull it out at the bottom. I would never have thought by myself to use a circular stitch holder as a stitch keeper for amigurumi. So there's a fun recommendation if anybody else wants to try that if you're a knitter and a crocheter. So thank you so much to the people at Clover. As I said, I've already used the crochet hooks, the pom-pom makers, the scissors, and the handy chart keeper and I will probably make it my mission to work through all the other projects. Things like this flower loom, I don't know when I'm going to get around to using, but that might be a nice thing to try with my little girl. So, thank you, Clover, for being amazing. Um, you'll probably see now every podcast, here's a new thing I've made with my Clover products. But, as I said, uh, for a new thing segment, that was pretty awesome. So, I think that is pretty much all I have left to talk about today. I've got a pattern coming out in the new Molly Makes, which will be out um, around mid-June. So look out for that. And I've also got a really fun bag pattern coming out with Hobbycraft. Um, over the next week or so so I'll also be sharing pictures of that on my um, Instagram and linking to that oh and talking of Poppycraft I thought I'd give you a little update um, last episode I sort of ended up having an unscheduled whinge just about how much work I felt I had on and part of that was um i'm air ambassador for knitcraft which 
I love and I love getting the yarns and working with the other girls but I was finding doing the free pattern every month quite a large commitment um, and just maybe that it was a little bit too much work for me well amazingly um, after I podcast last time we all ended up having a bit of a chat um, with the kind of hobby craft team about where we were at and how we were feeling and I was quite honest because I had just been quite honest on my podcast and I basically said the same things. I really love working with them but I was finding the one pattern a month too much of a commitment for me. Um, and probably just not the best use of my time um, from a financial point because I could do a new pattern and sell it every month and get a little bit of money from that but if I'm only doing one pattern every month and it's a free pattern then obviously that puts me in quite a different situation. So to their absolute credit, um, the team um, and Emily who heads up the Knit Craft team, they've completely revised the programme for us to allow us all more time. I think all there are sort of four of us that work on the Knit Craft projects on a regular basis. But they are always looking for new people and actually I think they've got a Granny Square um, month coming up where they're looking for 30 different people to work on projects so have a look on their Instagram if you might be interested in contributing to that um but yeah they basically have reworked the system for us I'm sorry about the sunlight by the way if it's distracting if we reworked the system for us to just allow it to make it work for us which I think is just a real credit to them as a company but also the fact that at the end of the day I'm a person dealing with another person and Hobbycraft are a big brand but they're not a faceless corporation like there are people there who care about the people they work with um so I'm going to be doing more like um three or four free patterns a year but I'll still be doing the yarn reviews for them and they've also um increased the amount of paid uh, work and opportunities that are available to us or they've just made it easier for us to sort of access those um, and they are happy to provide yarn support for any of my own patterns um, or for my testers which is amazing because they do have a great range and I do as you've seen I do end up using their yarn all the time for my designs anyway because I have so much of it in my stash and I'm a believer in using up my stash if I can um, and really excitingly, I am um, doing a collection for them. That's pretty much all I can say. Um, but that is a paid project and so that just ticks more boxes for me and is working much better for me. I think, to be fair, that would have been an option anyway, even if we hadn't have had this wider conversation. But I thought I'd let you all know because so many of you were really sweet and I think you were right I had kind of answered my own question if you're feeling really obligated to do something or if you're feeling really burnt out by it then that's just not a good recipe long term is it you're either going to lose motivation or inspiration or both um and it just needs to be fun and enjoyable doesn't it without getting too deep about life um, there's no point us spending our time on something. It's partly why I am quite flippant with my whips and why some of them end up in cupboards for six months and then I get them out again because I just think if you're not feeling the love for something, don't torture yourself, just put it away and then if you come back to it again then great. This is a hobby guys isn't it? It should be fun and enjoyable so but yeah thank you again for your advice and um your help on the matter because it did help clarify my thinking um and has led to an outcome that I'm really happy with so we'll see how that goes for another few months and yeah thank you so much I think that that is everything for this week I haven't really done any more lives recently partly because I was feeling really as I said, just full to the point of, yeah, I couldn't really take on anything else, but I do have some really great people lined up for future live interviews, so keep, um, keep an eye out for those. 
thank you for sticking with me and watching if you are here at the end i really appreciate your time and your comments and your support as ever um and if you have any questions or anything that you'd like to reply to then let me know in the comments and i will try and get back to you on there thank you so much and i'll see you all again in around two weeks time bye bye